Hello and welcome to Wisdom Bites. Hope you're well. Thank you once again for joining us. Very much appreciated. And in today's video, I'm going to be looking at the BLX chart and look at exactly what some of these scandals that we've had recently, how they've played out to give us some clue as to how the current scandal of the FTX scam may possibly play out in the next few days and weeks. I'll also be looking at the dollar and seeing exactly what the chart patterns are telling us here as to the future direction of the dollar. And I'll also be looking at the after effects of the FTX scandal. Please stay to the end. I want to have a little rant at exactly why people like this, unfortunately, are commonplace in the crypto space. So if that sounds interesting, then drop everything, get yourself a cup of tea, sit yourself down, eyes on the screen, and let's load up the Bitcoin vault. Okay, so before I begin, the usual polite reminder, please remember everything in my videos is for educational purposes. Nothing should be taken as financial advice. So please do your due diligence and make sure you do your wider research before you make any important decisions. Okay, so I'm going to start off on the BLX chart on the weekly time frame, and I'm going to show you this particular chart because what I've done is mapped out some scandals which occurred over the last 12 years. There have been many, many more than this, but these are some of the ones that stick out from what I've seen in the past. And what I want to have a look at is exactly what happened in the aftermath of these scandals. Obviously, COVID-19 wasn't a scandal. It was a black swan event. What I want to show is the after effects of what we can expect in the fallout of the FTX situation. Most people won't remember the Mt. Gox scandal. This happened well before I got interested in crypto. But this happened around February 2014, around about the time when we were actually at the beginning of this bear market here. And it happened at the beginning there. The second one, the Bitfinex scandal, again, and just like Mt. Gox, where hundreds of thousands of Bitcoins were hacked, similarly for Bitfinex, on their exchange, hundreds and thousands of Bitcoins were hacked there as well. But that happened as we went out of the bear market and were into the throes of the bull market here. And similarly for the COVID-19, we'd had the bear market, a mini bull market, came back for the beginning of the next bull market that we've just had. And what makes this FTX scandal a little bit different is right at the bottom of the bear market here. We haven't really got going yet. So what we really need to ascertain is how will it behave? Will it behave more like the COVID-19 situation or these two other scandals that we had, or the other two fallouts that we had here. So let's have a close look at the Mt. Gox scandal back in February 2014. So this was the Mt. Gox scandal. As you can see with this candle here, we had obviously a big fallout, but it was bought up very, very quickly. However, the pressures of this bear market which was on its way down to these levels meant that the recovery was very short-lived and then we went straight back down again. We tried to make an attempt to get above it here, as you can see at this level. So you ended up with a double top here before the market slid down. So what we can say with the Mt. Gox scandal was that this was really a temporary blip in terms of the market going down and then trying to recover because it was part of a larger trend down here. And if we have a look at the Bitfinex scandal here, which occurred as we were coming out of this bear market in 2014-15. So this Bitfinex scandal over here occurred at the bottom of the bear market. We'd made a double bottom here and we were well on our way to the bull market here. As you can see, as we were rising, we were more than likely at this point to be going like this over here. So this part would really have been attached to this point here. But this little pullback from these levels was met with this Bitfinex scandal of hundreds of thousands of coins being hacked on that exchange at the time. And as you can see with a long wick here, the whole thing was bought up here and we quickly went on with a continuation of the bull market. So once again, this Bitfinex scandal, very similar to the Mt. Gox one, was a blip which continued in the same direction as where the market was already going. And that is what's really very important to understand about these scandals, that they are more of a blip rather than a collapse of the whole system. And if we have a look at the COVID-19 situation, how that was brought up. So I remember at this point here, 
We were expecting to break this ten and a half thousand dollar mark here when this broke out. So as we can see with this, very similar to the other ones, we've had a blip here because the blip really means that it came back down, found support, and then very, very quickly we got bought out for the continuation of the same trend. So we were coming out of the 2018 bear market, had a quick rally up to 14,000 up here, and then we were coming down for that next leg of the bear market and showing signs of recovery when this hit here in, in March 2020. And once again, as you can see, with hindsight, that this was just a temporary blip for the continuation of the market. And this point here really would have been attached to this point over here, had this not occurred. So you can see there's a common theme that these things are a blip. And if we have a look at the FTX fallout, we're coming down at the end of this bear market over here. And as I've been showing over the last many, many weeks, we were coming to a point over here before this broke out to the downside. It was showing very good signs of a recovery and that we had bottomed out at the 17 and a half, created a second bottom in this W pattern over here, and we were on our way to much higher levels. That's certainly what I believed in at the point there because of all the indicators I'd shown you were all pointing in that direction along with the dollar pointing in the opposite direction. So for me, when I look at all the other scandals that have happened, they're all very similar. At the time, they look as though they're going to crash the market much, much further, and they can do. So we can obviously keep going down to around about the 12,000 mark down here. However, there is still a possibility that we make a V-shaped recovery back, having gone through this bear market, and we're now coming back up. So it really depends on how long we take to recover from this position and get into the point where we're recovering at the point where we were about to go up here. Only time will tell, but certainly when you look at the other scandals and the aftermath of that, and how we seem to be bought up very quickly, but here, at the moment, we aren't really getting that big move to the upside yet, as it may take a few weeks to play out. So we'll just have to see, but I just thought I'll give you an overall picture of what can possibly happen here based on past experiences. Okay, quickly moving on to the dollar on the weekly chart. So we've had a weekly close now below this support line that we've had since going back to the beginning of the year. And as I mentioned before, this gravestone doji candle over here will be weighing down very, very heavily on the dollar. One word of warning on the dollar side is that whenever we do get a break like this, a very sharp break that we've just had here, then history tells us that we more than likely, with a higher degree of probability, get a sharp return one more time to retest some of these levels here. Maybe this level, more than likely this level here, the Gravestone Doji level. But certainly I wouldn't be expecting it to um, go above this level here. But that is still a possibility. It may come and retest this, take a wick up, and then fall to the wayside. I wouldn't expect it to close above this level here, but certainly I would expect it to come close to the top of this candle here, this Gravestone Doji candle, before getting rejected. And if you do a 61.8 Fibonacci retracement, it takes you to around about the 111 mark, which is up to this halfway up this Gravestone Doji level. So this is what I would be expecting for a rejection in the next week or two at higher levels here from where we are, and then getting a big rejection down. So look out for that. Okay, so if we look at the 8 EMA on the Bitcoin price on the weekly time frame, we can see that we've got rejected one more time at that level, just as we were about to go. We've got this big red candle that's brought it down to the current levels at 16,700. So we've had a few fake outs on this 8 EMA at this point here in April. Then we had another fake out here, then another fake out just now here. So we've had three fake outs on this line. We can see quite clearly though with this trend and the formation that it was forming down here that we are coming towards the end of this bear market and we've just had a big setback round here. And for me, this setback with the FTX scandal, it really sets us back in terms of the cycles that I've been showing you. If you go to the daily chart, this was the beginning of the cycle here, the 60 day cycle, which topped out here after six days. And as I mentioned many times that the strength over here was telling us that we're 
actually we're going to be going to the higher side here with a higher degree of probability. So the question is, we're waiting for the bottoming out of this current 60 day cycle, which started over here. So this is the current bottom here, which was on the 9th of November when we reached 15 and a half. And if we measure it from this 60 day cycle start here, this 15 and a half dollar candle here was after 63 days. So it may well be that we've now on this 60 day cycle bottomed out here. However, the way this is developing, we could still have another leg down here to mark the end of this 60 day cycle. So that's entirely possible yet. So currently we're on 68 days here with this green candle. And that's still within the realms of the time frame that we need to allow for the 60 day cycle because it can be 70 days and it can be 50 days. And if this is the bottom here at 15 and a half for the time being in this cycle, and we can expect a little bit of a rally here. But what we have to do is we have to allow for the settling down of this period of the fallout that we've had with the FTX scandal. Because no matter what people say, whenever we have a fallout like this, we do have to have a period of settling down because it's very, very raw and people are very frightened. It creates a lot of uncertainty in the space, which means that people who are willing to make a decision to go long here when the market was rising, they're no longer willing to be confident enough to be able to even get in at these lower levels here. So that uncertainty, that confusion, that fear will prevent people from putting their money in here at this time. So what I would expect going forward here is that while I thought that this was the last 60 day cycle in this bear market, more than likely with a higher degree of probability, we may have to go through another 60 day cycle. So the whole period over here is going to create another 60 day cycle, which will take it into January. And if you're going to take a short term view, then you're really going to get chopped out here. But if you take at least a two year view, then this will seem in two years time as an amazing opportunity to get in. And yes, the market can go down further from where we are. However, these will still be very low numbers from where we expect to be in two years time. So if this is the bottom for this 60 day cycle after 63 days, then the next 60 days will take it to 8th of January 2023. And we may need to create over here what we created back here after the 17 and a half. So this kind of a structure of a double bottom over here is what we would now be expecting down here. And this could take a cycle, possibly two cycles. So we could actually go into February, March now. So in the next 60 day cycle, I would expect this top over here that we had at 21 and a half over here. I'm expecting some sort of a retest of those levels, but not break above them before we start coming down at the end of the next 60 day cycle from here to there around January time. So we'll just have to wait and see, but certainly we're going to have to create another structure before we finally break through these levels here and these levels over here. So my view of all this on the FTX side is that there were a lot of institutions waiting for us to break this 25.2 level here. And once we'd got above that, over here, they would have been putting millions, possibly billions into Bitcoin. And that liquidity would have been needed to go much further up. However, this has now caused so much uncertainty that people are going to delay those decisions and wait for the structure of the Bitcoin to, to process itself out. So what the larger investors and the larger institutions who have an interest in Bitcoin would now be doing would be to actually wait for further confirmation of how the price of Bitcoin develops and wait for certain levels, maybe this level here, before they make the decision that they would have made over here. So the whole thing is going to be delayed in terms of the actual cycles as they play out. Okay, so I'm going to show you this chart here, which is the Google Trends chart of people searching for Bitcoin over the past five years. And as you can see, just recently in the last couple of weeks, the interest in Bitcoin started to move much, much higher over here. The current week isn't actually reflected in this yet. So this will be a, a move to the downside here now. But we can see quite clearly here that in the bear market, since the top over here, which was about the first top around April, May time, that's when the highest searches were. And since then, it's been dwindling down in this bear market here. But just recently, it was trying to make a comeback to the upside. So we've had a setback there. So as you can see, there's a lot of people leaving the space. There's a lot of people who've lost 
interest now in this space and it's going to take a lot of time for the confidence to come back and it's all because of people like this here and unfortunately wherever there's a lot of money to be made it's always going to attract unscrupulous people with bad intentions and this guy here Sam Bankman Fried who was running the FTX he isn't the first and he won't be the last unfortunately this is what we have to expect it really is a fact of life that wherever there is money it will always have a trail of fraudulent people with ill intentions who are absolutely out to get people's hard-earned money and they don't give a damn about how it might affect those individuals and their families and their communities etc etc and when you do personal development like I do one of the things we learn very very quickly is that honesty pays because when I look back all these people who do these fraudulent things they don't really get anywhere in life. They're looking for short corners, but they usually end up behind bars or usually end up failing in a big way from their family's point of view, from the career point of view, from the financial point of view. Hopefully this will be a lesson for people in the future, but you know as well as I do that this is not the first and not the last of people like this who are going to have an eye on other people's money. Okay, finally, I'm going to have a look at the levels to look out for now that we're in this predicament over here. For me, there are only really two levels immediately. The first one is if you look at the bottoms of these wicks here and here, because look what happened when we went down to the 15 and a half, we came all the way with this green candle, all the way back up to 18.1. And that was in respect of this wick here, these wicks here, etc. So this is the level we've really got to cross over here. And that's at 18,200. And the second level obviously is this at 21,500. And that goes back all the way back up here to 21,800. So anywhere between 21,5 and 21,8. And if we take the line down here to these strong levels at around about 12 and a half, let's take this point here. These are the three critical levels now for Bitcoin. So what we need to do is to get above this 18,1, i.e. close above the 18,200 level over here before we know that this is on its way to the next level here. This is where the next test of this level will be within the next 60 day cycle over here. If we don't make a lower low from this point here at the end of the 60 day cycle from this point. But should we fall further down, then we would expect a big reaction at the $12,500 mark over here. And this test of the 21.5 level, this level here, would make sense because the 200 daily moving average is moving towards that level here now. So maybe by the time it gets here, we may be making a move towards these levels. So there will be some confluence over here and that would make sense to get rejected on the 200 simple moving average. Because if we zoom out, we can see that that line has played a very important and relevant role for the Bitcoin price on the way down over here. So these are the three levels that would be looking out for. Okay, so we'll leave it there for today. I hope you found value in the video. And if you did, then please do remember to like and subscribe and to turn on the notification bell. If you have any comments, questions or suggestions, then leave them in the comments below. Until the next time, take care, stay safe, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now. <laughs>